Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to our 10 a.m. virtual education program. My name is Rachel, education specialist here at the Topeka Zoo. And as always, we would like to thank our sponsors, Topeka Collegiate and the Kokari Foundation, for graciously sponsoring these classes. Now today, it is crazy that we have been doing these for several weeks, but today is our last kindergarten specific class. Now last week, we learned all about recycling as a solution to helping protect the land, the water, the air and space and animals that we share this earth with. Well, today we are going to focus on other solutions that you can do at home, even in kindergarten, to help protect the environment, our wild places and spaces and plants and animals around us. So when we talk about solutions to helping protect the nature around us, we oftentimes like to talk about it in terms of the five R's. Now, for those of you who grew up in the era when I did, we always knew it as the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. But there are actually, there have actually been two new R words added to how we can help the environment. And those two new R's are refuse and rot. And we will talk about the other R's today. So last week we focused on the first R, which is recycling. So we're not gonna talk about recycling today, but if you missed last week, go to the zoo's website and look at lesson five for kindergarten. You can learn all about how important recycling is. Today, we're going to focus on the other four solutions to how you can protect the environment. Now, rot is kind of a weird word, and all that means is composting. So we're not gonna get too much into composting today, but what composting is, is where you take any fruit, vegetable, eggs, things that you have left over, like a banana peel, or an orange peel, or any parts of the vegetables you don't use anymore, you put it in a big bucket of dirt, and it will decompose. It will break down over time. So rot refers to composting. But today, let's focus first on reusing. Reusing is one of my favorite solutions to helping protect our planet. Because by reusing something, you're not even having to use any electricity or water or materials like you do in recycling. You can simply just use it over and over. So one of the best ways to reuse things is to reuse paper. What I have here, this is a big stack of scrap paper. Here at the Topeka Zoo in my office, we have a big stack of scrap paper because although I no longer need the things that are on front of the paper, the back is completely usable. So anytime I need to write a note to myself or a note to somebody else, or I just need a piece of scrap paper, I go to my pile. So reusing paper is a really easy way to protect our resources, our trees especially, since paper comes from trees. Another example of reusing is one I will use every Sunday morning when my fiance and I are going shopping. I take an old envelope from a piece of mail that I got. Now the front, it has the, you know, the address and the envelope that I received, but the back is completely usable and we always write our shopping list every Sunday on the back of an old envelope that we got in the mail. So that's one easy way to, re to reuse something that comes in the mail and to help protect our paper because the less paper that we use, the less trees we have to cut down. And that means there's more trees which provide us <gasps> air to breathe and provide homes for many types of animals. Now, one of the easiest things you can do while reusing is if you get a plastic bag, now normally one of the things we want to do is try and not ever get these from the grocery store. We want to bring our own reusable shopping bag like this fantastic Tyrannosaurus Rex one that I got as a gift recently. So if at all possible when you're shopping you want to bring in your own reusable bag so we can reuse this. But if you ever do get a plastic bag you can reuse it for other things. I'm sure a lot of you might use this as a trash can liner for your little trash cans in your bathroom. 
or maybe you use it to scoop your kitty litter into. So anytime you do get something that's plastic like this that we cannot recycle, try and reuse it. I know I have a whole stack of them in my house, which we've accumulated over the last three years of living there. I try and always refuse these, but whenever I can't, I always use them for my kitty litter and other little things that I need to put trash in. Now, the next R that I wanna talk about today is refuse. And this is a big one, and it's one of the newer R's. What refuse means is refuse items that we cannot be recycled or that cannot be reused easily. So we just about talked about refusing a plastic bag. You can also easily refuse things like a straw. If you are ever in a restaurant and they automatically give you a straw, you hand it back and you say, no, thank you. I do not need that straw. Straws are made of plastic they cannot be recycled. And they oftentimes end up in our water, in our rivers, our lakes, they get into the ocean. Animals like sea turtles and other animals will eat them. These are very bad. So one very easy way we can protect all of the Earth's resources is by refusing little things like a straw. Oftentimes, it actually opens up a conversation. A lot of people say, why don't you want a straw? And you can tell them, I care about the environment. I don't want it to get into the ocean. A sea turtle could eat this. I want to help protect. And it's a very easy way. Even in kindergarten, you guys can make a big difference for the environment. Now, the final R that I wanna talk about, aside from recycling, rotting, reusing, refusing, the final R is reduce. And what that means is just reducing some of the things that we use every day that make us comfortable. Right now, I am using lights, electricity, because I am in this room. However, I am not in my office, so I turned the light off when I am not using that room. So one way that you can help from home is to reduce your electricity, your energy use. So doing simple things like turning off the light in a room if you were not using it. Turning off the water when you are brushing your teeth. All of these small changes make a big difference over time. So simply reducing the water and the electricity you use is one really easy way we can help animals. Another thing is reducing the amount of time you are in a car. So one way you can do that is by carpooling, which is the term we use when people, they share a car together. So this is a picture of four adults who might live a little bit farther away from work, and so they all ride together in one car. So by them all riding together in one car, they are using less fuel, they are putting less air pollution in the air. We don't have four cars on the road, we just have one. You might even consider walking to a place with your family or riding your bike with mom and dad. All of these things helps protect our world and we don't need to use as much fuel and we don't put out as much air pollution, as much bad gases into the air from our cars. You can also reduce the amount of trash you get by reusing things like a water bottle or Tupperware. Right? If you're making a sandwich at home, don't put it in a plastic sandwich bag, put it in a reusable container because then you're reusing this container and you're reducing your plastic bag consumption, how much plastic you use. Every time I go into a restaurant, it's very cool, but I always bring my own Tupperware because I want to refuse the styrofoam container that they give me. So oftentimes these R's work together. You can refuse, reduce, reuse, all in one situation. So friends, if you are in kindergarten, what I want you to do is I want you to create an Earth Pledge. Included in the comments here is a link to this worksheet. It has a picture of the world, which you can color, and underneath it, it says My Earth Pledge. And I want you guys to write one or two ways that you are going to help protect the Earth. It could include one of the five R's. You could recycle, you could reduce, reuse, rot or compost, or refuse something like a straw. Here, somebody wrote, I promise to use less plastic grocery bags 
and walk to work more often. So this was our educator, Erin, who is an adult and can walk to work on her own, but I want you guys to pick something that works for you even as kindergartners because a lot of these things help us to live comfortably. We need electricity, we need running water, but we wanna do what we can to minimize, to cut down on the use that we have so we can share our spaces with the plants and animals that we live with. So. One really cool example of a corporation, a big company, reducing their plastic use is involved in the animal I want to meet. Several years ago, McDonald's, which is a company we all sometimes enjoy, right? It's a fast food place. They had um, a drink, it's called a McFlurry. And the plastic lid of the McFlurry over in Europe, people would throw it in the trash. Well, there is a cute hedgehog species that lives over in Europe, and those hedgehogs would actually get into the trash and get stuck in that McFlurry plastic lid. So what did McDonald's do? It actually changed the design of their lids to be hedgehog friendly. Talk about a cool story. So McDonald's found out that their plastic, their trash, was hurting animals, so they changed their lids to help protect the hedgehog. I love that example. So that's a large example of a big company helping, but even still, as kindergartners and as zoo audiences watching this, we can make these little changes that help plants and animals. Because after you throw something away, you don't know what little creatures might actually get into that trash. So today, my friends, I would like you to meet our hedgehog. Now, this is not the same type of hedgehog that got caught in the McFlurry lid. Um, there are 17 differing species of hedgehogs around the world. There are some that live in Europe, some that live in Africa and Asia. This is one that lives over in Africa. And I want you guys to look inside this container before I pull them out. So he is so cute. You can see that he is in a, a box. This actually stored our latex gloves and we reused it, right? Just like we talked about. So after we were done with the gloves, this box, his keeper actually cut out a hole here and the hedgehog loves it as an enrichment item. He loves to burrow into this box and use it as their home. Kind of like when you get a big cardboard box at home, if you have a cat, they love to jump into the box. I know mine do. That's what the hedgehog did. He's like, oh, a new place to scurry under. And he was so cute in his box that I just had to put him, leave him in his box and put him in a container for you guys to see. But I am going to put on gloves and get them out for you guys as well. I'm wearing these gloves because hedgehogs, they have 5,000 sharp spines on their body and it would hurt to pick him up. That is a way that he protects himself. So I'm gonna put on gloves and I'm gonna get him out of his little box here. And you guys can meet Hermes. So Hermes is an African pygmy hedgehog, which means he lives over in Africa and he's kind of a smaller hedgehog species. Now he is covered in those spines. Spines are made out of keratin, which is the same thing your fingernails are made of. Now, spines are different than quills because spines are meant to stay on his body, whereas quills, like a porcupine, are meant to leave the porcupine and get lodged in a predator's face. Interestingly, people think that hedgehogs and porcupines are related, but they are not. Porcupines are rodents. They're related to mice and rats. Hedgehogs are in a family with other animals like shrews. So they are not related to porcupines, even though they both have the, the um, pokey spines all over their body. Now hedgehogs are interesting little creatures. They are insectivores, which means his favorite food out in the wild are bugs, but he will eat other animals, small animals as well, like small snakes and he'll eat his fruits and vegetables sometimes too. So insectivore means he mostly eats bugs, but he does eat other animals and plants too. Now hedgehogs protect themselves in the wild in Africa. They live in the grasslands and the drier places by two main things. The first thing he will do is he will curl up into a ball. 
And when he curls up into a ball, he, he pushes his head, his ears, his arms, his legs into that ball and he pushes up those spines. Would you guys want to bite into something so pokey? I certainly wouldn't. So by rolling into a ball, that is the first way that keeps them safe and it works against most predators. But the other thing that they will do is they will make lots of sounds. Hedgehogs will hiss, they will chirp, they will growl. They can even make a high-pitched screaming sound. So when he curls up into a ball and makes all those sounds, he sounds big and mean so that predators do not want to eat him. They actually get their name hedgehog because they live in the hedges or the bushes in Africa. And one of the sounds that they make has been mistaken for a pig or a hog, kind of like a oinking sound, which is pretty cool. Now hedgehogs, they do not push their spines into the predator's face to leave it there. But what they will do if the rolling into a ball and all of the hissing and sounds that they make doesn't work is they wait until the predator gets really close. And as soon as a predator comes in to bite the hedgehog, it will jump up and push its spines into the predator's face. But it's like a knife. Those spines go into the predator and come back out. They stay on the hedgehog's body. So most animals are not gonna try and eat a hedgehog because they are so spiky. So thankfully, this is an example of an animal whose numbers are doing just fine in the wild because predators don't wanna eat them. And they are actually very common pets. Um, this one used to be somebody's pet that they didn't want anymore. And so we were able to take it into our collection. Now in the wild, hedgehogs live about two to three years, but in human care, they can live eight, even 10 years. So Hermes here is between two and three years old. So he is full grown. He's not gonna get any bigger. And he is an example of an animal who we wanna help protect in the wild. So do we have any questions at home about how to help the environment, the five R's, or our super cute hedgehog Hermes? Daniela asks, what are other ways we can serve energy? We can conserve energy. That is a great question. So one of the easiest ways in kindergarten is just to please make sure you turn off the lights if you are not using them. Also unplug your electronics if you're not using them. So if you're not using the toaster, unplug it or the blender, unplug it. Um, try not to use the dryer. Dryers actually take up a lot of electricity. So if you can, especially if it's summer or spring and it's nice out, hang dry your clothes, hang dry your blankets. Not using the dryer is a really easy way to conserve energy. And when you're using the washer, use cold water. That's an easy way as well. Maggie stated, I'm going to try to remember to not waste electricity and water and not use plastic straws. And Eli said, we reused a box to create an airplane for me and my sister. Eli and Maggie, I am so proud of both of you. Every day you grow into such great conservationists, so keep up the good work. Does Hermes eat bugs at the zoo? Yes, he does. So he gets mealworms and crickets here at the zoo, as well as a variety of food, fruits and vegetables and some biscuits, some omnivore biscuits too. What is the biggest they can get and how fast are they? Um, ooh, that's a good question. Erin, would you mind looking up how fast they are? I'm not actually sure how fast they are. This is a full grown hedgehog. So he's kind of a plump little guy, um, but he is not gigantic. I would say he's probably a little bit less than a foot long and he weighs a couple pounds. So they do not get as big as porcupines, for instance. Those guys get really, really big. Erin is signaling me that they run four miles per hour. Okay, thank you, Erin. Um, one, of the, one of Hermes' favorite things to do, actually, we have a hamster ball um, and a hamster wheel, and he loves running in the ball all around this room and running on his wheel. When I put him back in his enclosure, he'll probably run straight to the wheel and start running on it. It's super cute. How did we get him? He used to be somebody's pet, and they did the responsible thing. They were not able to take care of him anymore, so they called us, and we did have a need for a hedgehog in our collection, so we, uh, he got rehomed to us. Now, sometimes if we can't find a home for an animal, we will help you try and find a home or give you other options. So the zoo is always here for you guys if you have animals you just can't take care of anymore. Bianca's asking, what other animals do they eat? Um, in the wild, they will eat some small snakes, 
some small mammals, maybe even a small lizard. Um, they also eat fruits and vegetables and other types of plants. Interestingly, hedgehogs actually have a little bit of an immunity to venomous snakes. So they help control venomous snake populations over in Africa, but some of the really venomous ones can still harm them. So they have to be a little bit careful with that. Okay, do we have any other questions on Hermes our Hedgehog or ways that kindergartners can help protect the environment? Okay. Well, if that is the end of our class today, my friends, I wanna thank all of you kindergartners for watching along at home with us. This is our last formal class for kindergarten, although keep watching because we have some really interesting animals to meet this week and next week. Tomorrow, we will be back with a first grade lesson and weather permitting, we will meet a big, super cute animal in the zoo. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow at 10 a.m.